red kangaroo. Powerful, comical, engaging. This is the desert dwelling symbol of Australia. But kangaroos can be found almost anywhere down under. They're up in trees, on the forest floor, and can even be found on the rocks. But all kangaroos face danger. This is the story of a mother and her joey, and how he comes into his own. There is tenderness here in the desert, and the harsh reality of survival. Persecuted by some, revered by others, the red kangaroo has astonishing tales to tell. This is Australia, the driest inhabited continent on Earth. 60 million years ago, this land began its final break from the rest of the world, evolving along a path all its own. Today, its vast open interior lies naked in the sun, a land from another place in time. It's unforgiving here, not for the faint of heart, and survival means marching to a different beat. But this dry, hostile landscape is not devoid of life. It's home to one of the most astonishing creatures on Earth. Kangaroos live in New Guinea and Australia, yet their name is known far and wide. But while the world may know a roo when it sees one, to science, there's still something of a riddle. You might think nothing this big is supposed to hop, but kangaroos do it with speed and agility. Six-foot marbles of efficient locomotion, they emerge from the rainforest, then spread over a continent while adapting to desert heat. This is the story of the red kangaroo, an amazing tale from the land down under. It's summertime in the outback, and the ruse can be found where there is food. Most red kangaroos are red in name only. The females and youngsters tend to be gray. The ruse look like they're congregating in groups, but it's food, not the company, that draws them together. For kangaroos, the most powerful social bond is between a mother and her young. And like many of Australia's astonishing mammals, joeys are raised in a pouch. They spend the first eight months of their fascinating lives living in a built-in nursery. This youngster needs a taste of life outside the pouch. His mother's nearly bursting at the seams. A wedge-tailed eagle waits for his debut, but it's not here to wish him good luck. Joey doesn't care who's in attendance. He's not in a hurry to come out. His mother has other ideas. She dumps him out in a tangled heap. For the first time, he sets foot in the world. But the place is not to his liking. The eagle watches his entrance and exit. It's following the show with keen eyes. A six-foot wingspan and powerful talons make the wedge tail a dangerous observer. For young kangaroos that are clumsy or careless, death can descend from the sky.
Shade is precious in the desert heat. To cool themselves, kangaroos lick their skin where blood vessels run close to the surface. Getting comfortable can be a bigger problem, especially with a pouch full to the brim. A Joey's world revolves around its mother. Relationships don't get much closer than this. The kangaroos languish. It'll be nightfall before there's any relief from the heat. This old male decides to lay down afternoon sticks. He's digging a hollow to rest his giant hips. For the joey, a tail in the face is worth the security of the pouch. He's safe from predators and free to keep an eye on the goings-on. His mother's portable nursery, the hallmark of most marsupials, originated in the dinosaur age. 100 million years ago, rainforest blanketed this land. Only small slivers of green still remain, lush shrinking Edens clinging to an island continent's edges. In places no more than 30 miles wide, these ancient rainforests are endangered. But it was in places like these that tiny marsupials first made their Australian appearance. Exactly how they lived in this isolated world is a subject for debate. But there's no dispute that evidence of marsupial origins can still be found here today. The kangaroo's ancestors started out in trees, much like this mountain brush-tailed possum, which moves through the branches on all fours. The first marsupials did raise their young in a pouch, but a tree-bound existence made them different in many ways. Kangaroo ancestors were probably good climbers with long toes, sharp claws, and prehensile tails. They may have started out as leaf eaters, but leaves are low in nutrition and difficult to digest, so perhaps Joey's ancestors ventured out of the trees in search of sweeter stuff. The dinosaurs were gone by then, but other deadly reptiles remained. This carpet python is looking for a meal, and possums have long been a favorite. Possum's keen hearing is no match for such stuff. The possum escapes with little more than a good scare, but next time, its luck may not hold. It was 15 million years ago when the kangaroo's ancestors moved down to the forest floor. Here beneath the canopy, shaded from heat, many animals are active all day.
and in this rich green jungle store, there's something for everyone to eat. The musky rat kangaroo is the smallest and most primitive of Joey's living relatives. Weighing in at only one pound, it's the only kangaroo that doesn't hop. Rat kangaroos live mainly on the ground. They don't use those tails for climbing, but for gathering nest building materials. And those long grasping toes are great for handling a fruit and insect based diet. Another ancient denizen of the forest arrives, and the little rat kangaroo beats a hasty retreat. The cassowary is an unusual animal that has changed little in millions of years. These large, flightless birds can be over five feet tall, and it's the males that look after the young. Shy birds, these giants shrink from confrontation, unless there's a threat to their young. Using their huge claws, cassowaries have been known to kill humans in defense of their chicks. But this primeval world where kangaroos evolved has been disappearing from Australia for millennia, and most kangaroos have long since adapted to harsher stuff. Out in the bush, the days of high summer have passed. The red kangaroos are more active during the day. But our Joey still spends most of his time in the pouch. Older ones are venturing out to enjoy the cooler weather. Red kangaroos are affectionate mothers. She grooms him every day, always keeping her eyes peeled for danger. She knows he's still small enough to lure unwanted attention. There is reason for her caution. The wedge-tailed eagle is nearby. When the bird takes off, mothers fold their joeys back into the pouch. With no prospects in the offing, the eagle returns to her nest to see to her own family business. Her chicks are voracious eaters. They love kangaroo meat. But there's competition in the predatory arena. Australia's wild dog, the dingo, also lurks wherever kangaroos gather. So the eagle must set out again. Wedge tails are partial to young joeys, but won't take on protective mothers to get at them. Soon he'll be as much of a handful as the other joey, who's already out and about. Once again, Joey's mother senses trouble, and her instincts are usually on the mark.
Not far off, the eagle has claimed a young kangaroo, and Joey's mother decides to depart. But wedge-tailed eagles have families to feed as well, and these two are anxious to eat. She brings them torn off slivers of meat, gently feeding the chicks from a fearsome beak. Nothing much has changed for the rest of the kangaroos. The young males play. The adults relax. Many settle in for a regular daytime snooze. But Joey's got other ideas. He's up now, so his mother must rouse herself to stand guard. Joey looks big enough to be weaned, he has taken to sticking just his head in the pouch, sometimes nursing, sometimes only for comfort. The kangaroos are having a quiet afternoon. For the most part, they just sit around or dust bathe. For the first time, Joey's mother allows him to wander more than an arm's length away. He's always been a fine scratcher, but he's still an uncertain walker at best. Kangaroos are built for hopping. They look ungainly, moving at slower speeds. Young males play fight for hours each day. This comical pair probably won't hurt each other, but someday they may fight in earnest for mating rights. Though he's still nursing, Joey wants to try a mouthful of grass and gets a thorn in the nose for his trouble. It will be a while before he's tuned to this landscape, but he just learned a valuable lesson. He turns to a more familiar source, but Mother isn't her usual welcoming self. She controls her pouch with powerful muscles and easily ejects her joey. His weaning has begun. From now on, he'll do more of his feeding from outside. In time, joey will join these sparring matches. Using their tails for balance, the young kangaroos stand upright wrestling with forearms and pawing at heads and shoulders. They throw their heads back, protecting themselves from sharp claws. A passing eagle, headed back to a recent kill, stops to survey the scene. Her arrival sends Joey diving headfirst into the pouch. All the kangaroos are wary. 
but with hungry chicks to feed, the eagle returns to the dead joey. Apart from human hunters, only the eagle and the dingo now regularly pursue red kangaroos. But huge lizards and even marsupial lions may have fed on Joey's ancestors. Giants once roamed this landscape. Their legacy today is a ferocious, flesh-eating marsupial now found only on Australia's companion island, Tasmania. Not known for their table manners, Tasmanian devils snarl and snap even when there's plenty to go around. The devils are gorging on a mid-sized kangaroo, usually called a wallaby. And the ruckus alerts another kangaroo cousin that it's time to take cover. <coughs> this little hopper is a Tasmanian betong. Her youngster, too large for the pouch, keeps to the nest when she forages. The smaller devil, a female, also has young who have grown too large for her pouch. From the safety of a hollow log, the young ones wait impatiently for their dinner. As quiet settles on the forest, the sprightly batons get back to business. Hopping probably originated in kangaroos like these. Perhaps the motion confused predators, giving the small ruse a chance at escape. But it was on the open plains that the kangaroo's singular way of getting about probably came into its own. Scientists know that hopping can be far more efficient than running. When a kangaroo hits the ground, its hind legs store energy like compacted springs. The energy helps propel the kangaroo upwards for the next hop. The motion also accordions the roo's lungs in and out, so the animal wastes no effort while breathing. Scientists haven't solved the mystery of how kangaroos went from four legs to two. But the Aborigines have long had their own explanations. One ancient myth holds that while making its four-legged way through the brush, a kangaroo heard sounds it had never heard before. followed the enchanting music until it came upon human beings singing and dancing on two feet. The kangaroo stood up on feet of its own, then began to copy their movements. It burst from hiding in a frenzy, intending to join the ceremony around the fire. The people were angry. They fell upon the proud animal, determined that it should die. Then a spirit voice boomed from the heavens, telling them to release the kangaroo and cherish him as a brother. While hopping earned kangaroos a special place in the aboriginal dream time, it also propelled them into some of the most unlikely places. This beautiful little kangaroo is a yellow-footed rock wallaby. 
They show off their mountaineering skills wherever cliffs jut out of Australia's vast desert land. Living in large colonies, the rock wallabies shelter in caves along the rocks. Shady crevices harbor vegetation year-round. But water can be a problem. To get it, they sometimes descend to where rain collects below. Wedge-tailed eagles prey on rock wallabies too. Youngsters waiting on the cliffs sometimes wander into the open. Only adults descend to drink. Young ones, too big for the pouch, must stay behind. In just a few minutes, she'll drink a tenth of her weight in water. Then she'll hurry back to her joey. Thirsty joeys drink straight from mother's mouth. Like their big red cousins on the plains, young rough wallabies spend hours in mock battle. And while the children play, some adults engage in courtship. But this male's gentle ardor is getting him nowhere. The children, oblivious, play on. He's nothing if not persistent, but she'll have none of it. Other adults bask lazily in the early morning light. Long eyelashes may help screen out the harsh sun and discourage flies. Before retreating into the cool caves for the day, the wallabies sunbathe. As the sun warms the cliff face, they head for their midday hideouts. The eagle will have no more chances at them today. It wheels and heads for the plains and its larger kangaroo fare. Joey's growing like a desert weed and sporting a much redder coat. Each day he spends less time in the pouch and no longer clings to his mother when out. This is a dangerous time for Joey. He's too big for his mother to carry if she has to run away, 
and reason to run is never far off. Away from the wild dog, mother lets Joey back into the comforting pouch. Nearby, a big male paces nervously. He's caught the scent of yet another danger. Drifting smoke. Again, the action of one kangaroo triggers the flight of others. This time, they've been frightened by fire, and they're racing to get away. But this is no wildfire. It's a weapon. The Aborigines have been using fire to hunt for thousands of years. They are after a favorite delicacy, a lizard called a goanna. Some seek refuge from the flame in trees. Others go underground. Here, women use sticks to locate escape tunnels. Then unearth the lizards using tin cans. A goanna for the barbie is reason for celebration. But these old ways are disappearing. Today, fewer aborigines use fire to hunt, and ironically, some kangaroos are paying the price. The little rufous hair wallaby depends on spinifex bushes that the aborigines burn. It needs their fires to thrive. They use the old bushes for shelter, but fire promotes the new growth that feeds the wallaby and these little spinifex mice. The wallaby eats the bush's young leaves. The mice take the seeds. The wallaby burrows into older bushes, which bristle with spiky defenses. But these thorny refuges have been no match against the upheaval of the last two centuries. Since Europeans arrived in 1788, almost half of Australia's kangaroo species have been declared extinct, endangered, or vulnerable. The whites brought foreign animals by the boatload. They converted vast areas of land to grazing, changing the landscape forever. Unlike the soft-footed kangaroos, hard-hooved sheep and cattle wore away the desert scrub and soil. Livestock paths quickly eroded into ravines. Pastures became wastelands. Rabbits, introduced for the benefit of hunters, bred out of control. Miles of fences went up in a vain attempt to contain them. Today, those same fences bewilder migrating herds of native animals like the emu. Inevitably, rats and mice accompanied the Europeans, as did the domestic cat. 
which quickly developed a taste for small kangaroos. So did the fox. They continue to take a dreadful toll on the kangaroo. Now, many of the smaller species face uncertain futures. But for some kangaroos, the Europeans provided a bonanza. They dug water bores throughout the desert to supply their livestock. And the red kangaroo has benefited ever since. One 19th century naturalist spotted so few red kangaroos that he predicted their ultimate demise. But thanks to the permanent water supply, the population boomed. When water is wrangled forest of its mother's fur, instinct keeps it moving up against the pull of gravity. The epic six inch journey takes just over three minutes. Once inside the pouch, it searches out the nipples. Joey's brother was actually conceived many months ago, but remained in suspended animation while mother tended to Joey himself. It's a miraculous process, the key to reproductive success. While a mother raises one Joey out of the pouch, a tiny one grows inside it, and a third waits on hold in the womb. It's time for her to put yet another embryo in reserve. Just two days after the birth, the big red starts sniffing around again. A sign she's already in heat. Mother won't let Joey into the pouch anymore, but she still nurses him occasionally. Amazingly, she now produces two kinds of milk, one for the embryo, another for Joey. Her condition sets some of the males to jousting. A big newcomer, collared by scientists to track his wanderings, has thrown his hat into the ring. He's over six feet tall and clearly dominates the contest. By kangaroo Queensberry rules, only the subdominant male kicks, giving away his inferior position. Mother, now eating for three and ready to make it four, grazes continuously. But fortunately, Joey increasingly fends for himself. The very biggest of the males now finds mother irresistible. He's huge. She appears to ignore his persistent attentions.
then, her scent attracts another suitor. But the dominant old male scoffs at competition. From a distance, Joey watches the proceedings. The result of this mating will grow for a few days, then become dormant until Joey's brother is out of the pouch. With such an ingenious breeding scheme, it is no wonder red kangaroo numbers exploded once humans supplied a permanent source of water. Every year, survey teams take to the air to count the reds. Their reports will determine the number of roos that can be hunted legally the following year. Strewn over the vast, harsh desert at the center of Australia, red kangaroos now number close to 10 million. Out in the open, Mother and Joey quickly recover from their fright at the plane. Others inevitably encounter the thousands of miles of fencing that crisscross the desert, and sometimes these encounters are deadly. Australia's kangaroo population is booming, and several million are culled each year. Mother and Joey freeze, caught in the hunter's lights. But they're not the quarry he seeks. has his sights set on huge red males. Culling kangaroos strikes many people as cruel. Others argue it's no crueler than slaughtering livestock. Given Australia's delicate desert ecology, the kangaroo harvest may prove more sustainable than raising sheep and cattle. Aside from hunter's bullets, kangaroos face another nighttime hazard. Thousands are killed each year on desert highways. Mother and Joey are safe the next day, but picking up dangerous habits. Strips of green growth parallel Australia's roads, places where the runoff from occasional rain nurtures fresh grasses. Feeding along roadsides at night, kangaroos often blunder into oncoming vehicles. The sheer numbers of red kangaroos makes this an all too common sight. But in a very different part of Australia, there are still rare kangaroos that few people have ever seen. Here, in one of the remaining slices of primeval forest, the kangaroo story comes full circle. This is Mount Finnegan, 
a place of reverence for Aborigines and one of the last strongholds of one of Joey's most extraordinary relatives. It takes patience to catch a glimpse of this elusive creature and a healthy measure of luck. An experienced woodsman recognizes telltale claw marks leading up into the canopy. There it is, Bennett's tree kangaroo. Millions of years after kangaroos came down out of trees, the Bennett's went back up. In evolutionary terms, they haven't been up there very long, and those big hind feet seem ill-suited to life among the leaves. While a mother forages, her joey clings uncertainly to a nearby vine. They look awkward and out of place up here, but tree kangaroos are very acrobatic. They can make spectacular leaps of 20 feet from limb to limb and can safely catapult 60 feet down if startled. Remarkably, another kind of kangaroo has also taken to life in the treetops. This is Lumholz tree kangaroo, and like their ground-based cousins, Mother and Joey are quite affectionate. As they walk, they move their hind legs independently, something most roos don't do. Nothing compares to Big Reds in the desert, where the hop still reigns supreme. Joey's quickly approaching his mother's size. Her younger Joey has recently started taking his first peek at the world, and will soon outstrip his brother in the quest for mother's attention. Joey must now look after himself and begin mixing it up with other young males. Right on schedule, he has taken an interest in jousting. Tentatively, he approaches the fray. mother looks on, he gets into his first dust-up. Joey is beginning to look the part. He has all the makings of a big red. Turning adversity into advantage, the red kangaroo has flourished, even as its kangaroo cousins have struggled or disappeared altogether. This pouch-raised powerhouse is a marvel of natural engineering. It inherited the harsh expanse of Australia's desert and made the landscape its own.